You're listening to The Roots, a podcast from Minnesota AMA District 23 Armca. I'm your host, Jackie Reese. Let's dive deeper into what makes our district so great. This podcast was prepared by an independent contractor and may not be the views of the board of directors of District 23 Armca or any of their sponsors or Welcome everybody to episode 11 of The Roots with Motokazi's new owner operator and a uh, longtime District 23 Armca racer himself, Cody Slark. Cody, how's it going? It's going great. How are you? I'm doing good. Yeah. Um, it's been a crazy wild summer. We've seen a lot of growth, um, you know, district wide. How, how has your racing been going um, at, at the Motokazi races? Uh, it's been it's been great. We've had a very large number of little bikes. So 50s, 65s. Um, we've seen a growth in just newcomers to the sport that you'd never you know, you never seen a lot of familiar faces yet, but a lot of newcomers getting into it. I probably get four or five, six emails a week about, Hey, I want to get my kid in the sport. How do I do that? And, uh, it's, it's great to see, it's great to see it finally kind of coming back around after what we thought was going to be a terrible year. So. Awesome. Well, that's great to hear. Um, I'm sure, you know, you've met tons of people over the years in district 23, but, um, for people that might be more curious about you yourself, how did riding and racing begin for you? And at what point did you come into racing in District 23, Armka? Um, so I was very little. Uh, my kind of a family friend of ours rode dirt bikes. And we actually went to Jordan race, you know, <laughs> motocross race, and uh, watched it and begged and begged my dad for a dirt bike. And he just said, hey, you show me that you want to work hard. You want to do it? Then I'll buy you one. And uh, we ended up buying, uh, you know, kind of a off-brand dirt bike that wasn't legal and went through that whole loops. But uh, finally, we ended up in Cambridge uh, when I was eight years old and just got smoked by about every fast kid that came out of that group and <laughs> was scared to death. But uh, hey, I, I returned the next weekend. So yeah, it was kind of a di- roundabout way, kind of a different way of going at it, I guess. Yeah, that's cool to hear, though. It's, uh, you know, most of the time, it's, it's tough to get into the sport. I've had that conversation on the last podcast, you know, you kind of have to know someone to get into the sport. So it's cool that, um, even though it wasn't the most conventional way of getting into it, it was, it was good for you. And, and it turned into a successful career. Take us a little bit through, um, where you took racing over the years. I know at at one point you took to the pro ranks, so I'm sure people are very curious to hear about that. Yeah. I mean, growing up, I've never been the fastest guy by no means, but, uh, just kind of meeting friends, um, faster guys like Joe Perrin, Nick Jackson, um, good friends like that, where you just ride with them all the time. You start to get a little better, you know, you kind of learn the tips and tricks. And, uh, 2014, I uh, went and got my professional license and, uh, tried to do that through 2018. Uh, I never qualified for a national, but I've been close. And, uh, for a guy that's working nine to five, you know, five, six days a week, and then heading all the way to Colorado, it was kind of tough to, um, to see it continuing, but, uh, yeah, it was fun. I'd I'd say that's the best times of my life traveling with my buddies to all these races and, and just getting to hang out and feel like a big shot for a little bit, I guess you could say. (laughs) Exactly. And, you know, everyone kind of, uh, deserves that in their own right. Right. So, um, what was the, what was the best that you ever qualified and was it like the best overall, uh, pro national experience for you? So I think the best I qualified was around 50th, which is close, but, (laughs) but, uh, it, it, I mean, I've had, they're all kind of special in their own, right. Um, you get to experience different things and different tracks that you'd never get to experience, you know, I'm sure anybody that's been to a Millville Pro Day knows that the track is completely different than it is on Amateur Day. It's everything's built up. Um, you look at the guy next to you and it's, oh, there's uh, Ryan Dungey. You know, you're like, holy <laughs> fuck. Uh, <laughs> how am I supposed to compete with that? And uh, yeah, it's, they're all kind of special in their own right, I'd say. I don't know. it. That race, uh, LCQ, I actually was running in the top six and you need to go in the top four and somebody fell over and I ran into the back of their bike. and. No. <laughs> There and I worked my way back up, but I ended up 50th overall, which is pretty good, I think. So, yeah, I'd say that's pretty good. Um, yeah. W- what was your favorite track that you went to? Oh, you know, everybody says Red Bud, but Red Bud is pretty intimidating. Um, <laughs> honestly, Oville Pro Day, you can't you can't match it. It's it's honestly 
all the local fans are there and all your buddies are there and just doing that first lap in practice everybody's hanging off the fence cheering for you obviously as we all know the dirt's great the track's got a great layout john martin and greta they're awesome people and i i would say millville even though it's an hour and a half from home i think millville would be my favorite yeah and i i think uh, a lot of local pros think that um in the same way right like y- you can't match the the hometown crowd cheering you on it's a very special feeling absolutely um, um so at some point here, you transition from racer to race promoter. Take us through a little bit how that came about for you and what it all entailed. Yeah, so kind of the end of 2017, um, I was kind of down in the dumps, trying to make a national, trying to do this racing thing, figuring it wasn't going to last forever. And and you kind of, I, I obviously wanted to stick around and keep riding and racing and was doing some local district races and stuff and uh lee tice the owner of moto Kazi previously uh kind of approached me and another gentleman that i won't name <laughs> but mm-hmm. uh he approached me and and just kind of said hey i like your work ethic i know you know a lot about the sport i'm thinking about you know getting out of it it's he's been he did it for 23 years and after 23 years you kind of want to spend a little time with your family so um he just kind of approached me in that way. And I, I just looked at him with, you know, big old deer in the headlight eyes and like, Whoa, holy buckets. But, um, no, I, I kind of agreed, but on one condition is that he kind of helped me out for a year. So I kind of, I worked for him for the whole 2018 year, um, learning the ropes, um, as any racer out there, I'm just going to let you know, there's a lot more that goes into it than anybody. (laughs) Um, a lot more. I was definitely surprised my first year following Lee around and just like, Holy, you know, it's a lot. And, uh, you know, 2019 was my first year running races by myself. And ever since then, we've been trying to grow and, and make it great. And I love hanging out at the track and seeing all these familiar faces and the fresh faces. And, and it's, it's so far, it's been a heck of a ride. It's been great. That's awesome. Um, you mentioned there are some surprises there with what goes on behind the scenes. What was something that was, you know, the most surprising to you in that process? Um, just kind of the background of, you know, everybody's got to get insurance. Everybody's got to, you know, be sanctioned. Everybody, there's a lot of paperwork involved in this whole deal. Uh, what a lot of people don't know is, is every track promoter, you know, just about every track promoter in the state's got a full-time job besides what they do. And it, um, it's crazy the amount of work, that, you know, we're, we're, we're at work all day and then we come home and we're working on dirt bike track stuff. And, um, I think that's the craziest part is just the time that goes into it. It's not a, it's not a summertime only thing. It's been, we work on it all year round and uh, granted we might only have a few races here and there, but it, it, it's definitely a full year round commitment. And I think that's what's shocked me the most is, Hey, I thought he just took the skid motor out in the summertime and dusted it <laughs> off. But here we go. So um, yeah, it's, it's definitely a full year round commitment and it's, um, there's been a lot of helping hands along the way for me, especially, and, and I appreciate all that. And it, uh, it made it a lot easier, but yeah, it's just the workload that comes behind it. Um, it's no, we're no stranger to 20 hour days, we'll say. So that's wild. Um, can you tell us about a time that was just like particularly challenging for you, maybe a certain race situation or um, an upset parent, you know, like a, a customer service type thing that you didn't expect to have to deal with something that was super challenging in, in promoting these races? Um, I mean, every race has got its own challenge, so it's kind of hard to pinpoint, but yeah, <laughs> got a few disappointed parents. Um, nothing that got out of control yet, I'd say. Um, the worst part, the, the most challenging part of it all is just the the injury side of things. When, uh, when you see a rider go down on your track, um, my mind at least goes to what did I do wrong? What, what can I do better for next time? Is the track good? Is that jump sketchy? Can I fix it? Um, and you know, most of the time it's just, a you know, a mistake on the rider's part or what have you, but, um, it's, it, that's the challenge. The most challenging part is just, you know, kind of going through that process of, man, I, I don't want to see anybody crash. I want everybody to have a good time. And, and that's what we're all here for. So yeah, I'd say probably that side of things is the, is the hardest part. So. Yeah. And that's difficult for anybody involved really to see, you know, if motocross is a family and um, seeing any, any part of your family, you know, get hurt is, is especially difficult. And I'm sure that's difficult on you, you know? So um, 
it's it's noble for you to to continue on and know that it's not always your fault um oh. yeah <laughs> <laughs> it's tough because yeah you do you do blame yourself a little bit but uh then again it's you know it happens i've been hurt many a times at a dirt bike track and the only person i blame is me like come on dummy <laughs> why do <laughs> you do that so yeah so Normally, in a normal year, you have Supercross races at, um, you know, Jordan specifically and other county fairs, but you also have motocross races at um, Cato Cycle Club in Mankato. Unfortunately, that's not particularly the case this year. Maybe um, for people who are wondering what's kind of going on with uh, the Mankato motocross track. Yes. So we've gotten many questions about this. And, uh, <laughs> and so uh, last year I uh, was kind of looking around and man, it was, it was brutal how kind of the facility was and, you know, just needed some time to get it kind of re kind of reconfigured, kind of reborn essentially. Um, I remember back in the day going there and, and it was, you know, a little nicer than it was now. And I granted, I take a lot of that responsibility of just not, uh, not knowing and not being able to do that work. But uh, this year we took the year off to kind of refurbish the facility, um, fix things up that were starting to kind of break down a little. Um, I'm sure everybody that's ridden there has known about the spring in the hill in the back. Um, <laughs> we're, gonna fix that. we're gonna make sure that we can get the whole track open every time. And, and I just wanna run a safe, but fun motocross track and make sure that when people show up it, uh, they, they wanna ride, you know, versus all, oh, it's it's weeded over and you know <laughs> so i want to i want to make sure that it, the facility is in great shape um i'd love obviously we're i'd love people to come back but we're we're definitely coming back for 2022 and uh we'll be on the schedule this fall so we're gonna we're pretty excited to come back that's awesome mankato is definitely one of my favorite tracks in the state just with the the natural elevation and just twisting and turning through the woods it, it's an amazing track in my opinion so it's cool to see that um you've put some more effort into making it even better what kind of things uh, in, in relation to the facility have you been working on um mainly you know we're fixing our water system uh fixing fences um kind of refurbishing start gates just more maintenance than anything and then um we got a big surprise with kind of how the dirt is shaped there. Um, I was going to add a few more little surprises in there too. Um, but uh, we're going to try to get them back hills in better shape, get the water drainage better. Um, over the years, it's just natural, you know, erosion coming down that hill. And we're going to try to keep it, uh, keep it from doing that from now on and keep the dirt on the dirt bike track and make sure <laughs> that uh, make sure that everything is open every time somebody comes and we're going to make sure that it's fun and, and uh, a big part of it is just for me when I come down that it's easier to work on for me. Um, so I don't, I'm not uh, busting my tail trying to get uh, playing the mud back in the backside of there. So we're definitely uh, working on it. We're making a nice improvements and uh, yeah, I'm excited everybody to come in 2022. That's awesome. Yeah. We'll, we as a district will be happy to have you back. So um, I guess my uh, overarching question for you is, has this been an, a rewarding experience for you to, to be involved at the local racing level and, and see these races that you have put into effect, you know, go successfully? Has it overall been rewarding? Oh, I mean, yeah, yes, it has for sure. Um, over the past three years, obviously, I started when uh, in 2019 and kind of got my feet wet with it and learned a lot that year. And, and then 2020, obviously, the COVID uh, stuff happened so we had a lot of restrictions to work around and and it just the challenges leading up to it and now you, you see the turnout and you see the best part is is when the kid comes up at, at you or sorry brain's moving faster in my mouth uh, when the kid comes up to you at the end of the day and says he enjoys the track he had a blast he's got a first place trophy in his hand he's going home happy that's that's the rewarding side of things at the end of the day when you get to see that pay off then that's that's what's rewarding to me at least so yeah, that's awesome. And and you can relate to it just as much as I can, you know, uh, with that, your first trophy ever. And, you know, at, at those Supercross races you run, that's the case for a lot of kids. It's their first win or their first trophy. And um, how does how does the Supercross side of things uh, pan out a little bit differently for you? So just being more kind of local with the county fairs, I think that entices a lot of people to kind of come in for their first race. Um, because mom and dad are there, uh, grandma and grandpa, aunt and uncle, everybody's showing up. They're in the stands. It's uh, under the lights. It's more of a super cross feel. 
and uh, the county fair is going on. So it's kind of a win-win to come to something like that for your first race. And then all of a sudden they're asking me, hey, how do I sign up for the district? How do I sign up for the AMA? And then you see them kind of get hooked through this process. And all of a sudden their kids on a big bike race in B class, top five in B class, you know? So it's, it's kind of crazy how it, uh, it progresses like that through just the little county fairs where, you know, obviously we're, our turnouts aren't as big as, as a district weekend race, but they're pretty close to the fact of we're kind of almost a feeder system into that district side of things. So if that makes sense. Yeah, absolutely. That's, that's cool to hear that. Um, it's another way for people to get their feet wet and, and get into the whole motocross community that we have here. Um, you mentioned that you wanted, when you were done racing pro, you wanted to stick around local racing. What advice do you have for other people that might be in a similar situation that want to stay involved in motocross, but maybe not necessarily as seriously as they had taken it at one point? I mean, there's, there's numerous things. And, and I mean, there's a lot of district help needed, I would say, <laughs> uh, through, um, just we're always looking for something somebody to you know support us with opening trails and and keeping dirt bike tracks open and um even even down to flagging at your local race that's probably the hardest part of the whole job is trying to find some people to help flag um but uh <laughs> even just down to flagging at your local race or working at a dealership or something that's going to involve you in the whole cycle of things um racing full-time is a, is a tough job and it's, <laughs> but, uh, if you can continue kind of looking for little avenues to kind of open the door, like I know uh, a kid that works for me right now, he's going to mechanic school to try to become a factory team mechanic. And, uh, he wants to stick around well beyond his years of racing. And it kind of starts when you're, when you're a little younger and just kind of the love of the sport. If you love it enough, you're gonna, you're gonna stick around either way. There's going to be a way. So that's awesome. Yeah. There's, there's always room for more help, right? Like no one's ever going to say no to you in, in a, a community like this. So that's, it's cool to see that, you know, you found your place um, in our local community and uh, you know, just staying involved and staying active. It's really great to see Cody. Absolutely. No, thank you. It's, it's fun to, it's fun to be around. I'll tell you that. <laughs> <It's fun. laughs> you know, as a little kid, I grew up playing in the sandbox with toy dirt bikes and toy dozers and now I'm playing with real dirt bikes and real dozers. So, uh, <laughs> so. Uh, that's perfect. And, uh, <laughs> <laughs> you know, it, it, that's the fun part of the job, right? Like you, you mentioned earlier, the paperwork's probably not that fun, but, uh, the, the getting in the dozer is probably, I would, I would think one of the most fun parts of that job that you have. Oh yeah. It's, it's definitely an art form. Um, it takes many hours to learn and, uh, man, it's, it's definitely fun when you can just use your creative ability to, Hey, I want to put a jump there and see how that pans out. And <laughs> the hardest part I would say is when I build a track, I'm used to building the track for me and my buddies. Right. Where obviously the skill level is a little higher and uh, you got to remember, Hey, we got all abilities coming. They can't hit a 90 foot super cross triple. We should probably tame it down a little bit and, uh, <laughs> and make sure that everybody's not going to just bonsai it off of this thing. So that's, that's the hard in that aspect, but yes, it is the funnest part for sure is playing in the dirt. So yeah, that's cool. And it's nice to know, you know, for people that are coming to your races that you, you know, the difference between those kinds of tracks and you know, what needs to go into a suit. It's going to be fun for everybody. Oh yeah. No, it's, that's, that's always the goal is man. Hey, you got to make it challenging enough for the, the fast guys and you got to make it, you know, tame enough for the guys that uh, they don't want to be going over jumps like that. So it's, <laughs> it's, it's a difficult aspect of it, but it's definitely, uh, it's, it's fun. It's fun to think of things that are challenging yet safe, I'd say. So that's awesome. Well, I, I think that about does it here for episode 11 of the roots. Thanks for joining me, Cody. Yeah. Thank you. And thank you everybody else for tuning into this episode. Hit that subscribe button wherever you're listening and we will see you in two Mondays. Thanks for joining us. Catch us every other Monday wherever you get your podcasts as well as on our YouTube page. 